Well, last year he was a Toronto lawyer with a passion for basketball. Now he sits in the House of Commons on the Liberal backbench. I met up with Raj Graywall at an Ottawa basketball court for our last Commons folk of the season. Okay, we're here at the RA West Gym here in Ottawa, and I'm with Raj Graywall. He's an MP for Brampton East, right? Yes, Welcome sir. to the show. Why are we here in a gym? Like, as you can tell, I don't know much about a gym. What's this all about? Oh, well, we're here to talk about the sport of basketball, how <laughs> important it is to get uh, our young Canadians uh, fit and in shape and uh, involved in physical activity. Okay, now you do play basketball a lot, though, like uh, as an MP as well? Well, I used to play a lot more before I became elected to the House, but uh, we do run a, a drop-in every Sunday with a local state youth federation in our riding. Yeah. Uh, and about 110 kids show up uh, from 12 to oh, 5 wow. at Castlebrook Secondary School. I heard you beat the uh, reporters, the press gallery in basketball. Yeah, so yesterday Yesterday was the fifth <laughs> annual parliamentarian uh, uh, basketball tournament, and uh, we were very successful, and the Liberal team won. All right, we won't dwell on that since it is the press gallery. All right, tell me about one thing, the thing about you that you, you set a bit of a record even before you became the MP by having the largest nomination meeting uh, leading up to the last election. Why was there so much interest in your riding to run for the Liberal nomination? Well, I think it's just about grassroots support. I think people were really fed up over the last 10 years about the Conservatives' mm -hmm. uh, government, especially on immigration policies. So they were looking for a change. Uh, Brampton East is my home riding. I've lived there for 24 years. Uh, and, uh, you know, we just we did it the old-fashioned way, one door at a time and uh, one house at a time. Signed up members and... Uh, 3,000 people showed up 3, for the nomination. Yeah, it was a really exciting day. And, uh, <laughs> Uh, to be honest, it's a really big team effort, and uh, I stand here because uh, my team worked very, very hard. All right, you're a, you're a successful lawyer. Why did you want this job? Well, it's an opportunity to, you know, give back to my community. Again, uh, Brampton East is my home riding. Mm -hmm. I've lived there for 24 years, and it's about adequate representation. Uh, we made a pledge during the campaign to run an accessibility. Uh, I didn't change my cell phone number. I still handle all my constituency calls myself, return my phone calls, mm -hmm. meet with whoever wants to meet. I mean, if you look at it, Don, that's how democracy is supposed to work. Right. Uh, you're supposed to be the voice of your people in Ottawa and not vice versa. And, uh, and that's a real nice change that's been happening. And, you know, politics is my passion. Uh, it's an opportunity to serve the people of Brampton East and ensure that they get the best service they deserve. How does someone serve, though? You're, you're on a backbench with an awful lot of others. Yes. How do you stand out in that crowd? I mean, there's like 280 people that aren't in cabinet. Yeah, well, I think it's about um, working hard. Uh, I mean, throughout my entire life, uh, I, you know, I was taught at a very early age by my parents that hard work leads to success. And that was true in, the, in, in law school, that was true on Bay Street, that was true during the nomination. And that's going to be true you know, throughout uh, you know, the stint as a member of parliament. Uh, so you just keep your head down, you work hard, you're a team player, and you help your constituents. And that's the most important part. There's no better feeling, Don, than solving a constituent's problem uh, and yeah. helping them Tell me, tell me about your parents, because they're, you know, they're immigrants too, as yes, well, right? Yes. So tell me about them. So they're phenomenal people. Uh, I mean, my parents immigrated here in the late 70s, early 80s. Right. Uh, dad was a taxi driver for the majority of his life. My mom lived to boxes in a factory. Wow. I mean, it's a similar story to a lot of immigrants across the country. They worked very, very hard. They understood that in Canada, uh, it doesn't matter where you come from. As long as you work hard, anything is possible. And it's pretty cool because, you know, they first landed in British Columbia, and my oldest sister was born in BC. Uh, then we moved to Alberta, where I was born. Uh, and then because of the economic conditions, my parents ended up settling in Ontario and in Brampton, and that's where my younger sister was born. So we're Canadian from East Coast to West Coast. Immigration issues. Like, it's a tough balance because you've got, you know, the refugee question, you've got economic uh, interest, you've got family reunification issues. How do you find the right balance? What's the, what's the secret there? Well, I think uh, immigration is good economic policy now, too. We want to, uh, you know, bring the best and most talented people to Canada to help grow our economy, especially when it comes to innovation. And just Canada is such an accepting country, such a diverse country, and it's been built uh, on this acceptance in the Canadian Charter, and it gives all people from all walks of life an opportunity to make it. I think immigration policy is very, very important. Mm -hmm. Now, it's also a very difficult file, and I think Minister McCallum is doing a wonderful job at it, but 99% of the cases that come through my office are immigration related. Isn't that right? Uh, and so there's a lot of bureaucracy there, and uh, one day at a time, uh, we're fixing it, and we're trying to solve people's problems. Quick last thought. What's something about you that people would find kind of surprising? 
Um, everybody always said that I'm in great shape. I'm not in great shape. <laughs> I eat way too much junk food, and uh, I have a little bit of a chocolate hydration. <laughs> All right, 50 bucks for the charity of your choice if you can sink that basketball right through that hoop. From here, right, 50 bucks. 50 bucks? I was going to give you a 25 if you even hit the backboard, but you didn't. I can probably do it again without my jacket. <laughs> All right, we'll get him to do it again. All right, thanks very much, Raj. Let's go have some fun. <laughs>